Amen. So, uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And we're going to be reading a few verses. So, um, I just want to thank God today um, because He gave me the opportunity to be here once again and to preach His Word. It's a, it's a privilege and it's a blessing to, to speak, you know, the wonders of God because I always think to myself, you know, what? What can I possibly say if it's God? No, what, how can God use me? No, he, he doesn't need our help, but I thank God that He gives us opportunity for us to preach the Word of God. It's, it's a blessing that we get to do it because you know, the angels can't do it. And, but I can testify to people that God saves and He has saved me, He has healed me, so I can say that. I know because a lot of people say, you just believe in God because your parents made you go to church. No, I believe in God because I've seen His glory. I've seen everything that He's done in my life. So that's one of the reasons why we serve God because we know He's true and we know His love is real. So, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And it says, On the same day when evening had come, He said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the, in the stern sleeping on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, you do not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still, and the winds, the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And we're going to read a couple of verses from chapter 5 too. Then they came to the other side of the sea on the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with unclean spirit. All right, we're going to read. Stop right there. So I want to talk to you guys today, this morning, about time to cross. So if we can, uh, we can bow down our, our heads and, and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord, this morning to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you all glory, Lord. We thank you for being here, for giving this opportunity to be here once again in your house, Lord, to worship your name, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all the brothers and sisters that are here. I ask, Lord, that you bless this word, that you are the one that preached this word to us, to our hearts, Lord Jesus, that we may see a change in our hearts with this word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys can take your seats. So I want to talk to you guys on the title, Time to Cross. And uh, this is a commandment that God, or a statement that, God, that Jesus made to the disciples in this day, but... I still believe God is making that statement today to us. I still believe God is making this command to us, to me, to you, to the church. He's telling us to go across. He's telling us to grow in our spirit, to grow in our spiritual life, and to grow into our ministry. He's telling us to go deeper in the relationship with Him. Because He has called us to go deeper. And the, in order to go deeper, we do this by laying a will and do the will of God. It might not be easy, but it's, it's, it's always better for us. It's always better for us to the will of God. So, but going deeper is going to cost us something. You know, it always does. You know, it's going to cost our will, our wants, that we want to do things, that we want to handle things, our choices, our decisions. Maybe we want to watch TV, but God telling us to pray. Maybe we want to skip church, but God says that He wants us there. You know, maybe someone talks you know, harsh about you and you might have to keep your mouth shut. It's the truth, but God's telling us that He wants us to go deeper and that's what it's going to cost us. You know, some people want to eat, want to go eat. And God's telling us, no, it's time to, to fast. You know, this day is for fasting. We have to crucify our flesh. So in other words, we've got to let our spirit dominate our flesh in order to go deeper with God. So, we gotta take it, you know, one step at a time. But, each step we take is a step that we go deeper with God. But the truth is that, sometimes, 
We fall into this routine. We fall into this routine of just praying in the mornings when we wake up or something when we eat. And I say something because, um, like I was telling the youth a couple of weeks ago, I would be embarrassed. And I'm not be honest with you guys, I would be embarrassed to pray at high school. You know, but with time, I learned that it's it's a privilege, but you know, I was out some that's why I said sometimes I would pray, but but we fall into this routine that we that we that we just pray when it's it's like a necessity. It's not that we want to, it's just that we feel like we, we it's a necessity that we only pray when we wake up, only pray when we go to church, and we fall into this routine. And and then we go to church with this mentality of not expecting anything. We just go in thinking, hey, it's just another time. I'll just go in and out. So everybody sees that I'm there, pastor sees that I'm there, and then that's it. We follow this spiritual routine. And the, the, it, sometimes it, it takes control of us. But it's, it's, it's okay to have a routine you know, in, in your life, in your daily life. Because as humans, we, we're creatures that have it. There's nothing wrong with having a routine. You know, in fact, it keeps our, our life you know, in a disciplined way, you know. And in Christians, we also have routines. You know, we get, it keeps life in order, but as Christians, we are called to be something else. Not to be routine in the spiritual things. See, let me, let me tell you something. It is fine to, to be a Christian with a routine. It is not fine to, be, to have a routine Christian life. But God's telling us today, it's time to break off from that. It's time to go deeper. It's time to leave that routine behind. See, because when you break off from all that, what, what happens is that you get hungry for God. Let me see if this, this thing works. So it, you get hungry for God. And this hunger that you have produces an action in your life. Can you, can you, Jimmy, can you switch the slide? So, it produces this hunger in your life. And then there's, there's, there's this action. And this action is for you to tell others about God. You, so you influence others for Jesus. Because hungry people will influence others for God. Um, and Psalms 107, this is what it says. Psalms 107, 36, it says, There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish the city for, for a dwelling place. And he says, He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly. This is the blessing of the hungry for God, that they influence others for Christ. You know, they influence others, and their church grows. See, we want to see our church grow. We want to see a revival in our, in our church. Well, the revival starts with us. Then it spreads all over. It spreads our, to our neighbors, to our friends. But the revival has to start with us. So we got to break off from this routine and start seeking God in a different way and start seeking God in a deeper way. But how do you break off from this routine? The way you do it is you got to be unsatisfied with your spiritual life. Not dissatisfied, unsatisfied. Because dissatisfied, dissatisfied means that you're unhappy, frustrated, or disappointed with the person. But unsatisfied means that you want more of that. That you're not full yet, that you want more. So unsatisfied means that you want more from God. And I'm not talking about material things about I want more more of God's blessings, I want you know bigger house, bigger car, no, no. I'm talking about the spirit of God, the presence of God in your life. But in order to go deeper, you need to be unsatisfied with your life, with your spiritual life. Because no matter where you're at spiritually, you should always decide to go deeper with God. Why do you do that? Well let me explain to you. Let's look at the life of Moses. And uh, we're going to read uh, Exodus 33. And it says, Now therefore I pray to you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, 
so that I may find favor in your sight. So this is Moses praying to God. And then verse 17, uh, God you know, assures Moses that he is going to fulfill that. But when God tells him that Moses wasn't content with that, he said, well, if I can go a little bit deeper, I'll go deeper. And then Moses, uh, Exodus 33, 18 says, I pray that you show me your glory. So, this wasn't a prayer for material comforts or health or wealth. It was a prayer for his ministry, for his successful ministry, for a place to go deeper. It was a prayer to know God deeply. So, think about this. Moses wanted to go deeper with God. Amen. And how, how does Moses want to go deeper with God? Can you, can you change this slide, Jimmy? Um, he's a man that talked with God in the burning bush. Amen? He saw the miracles that God did in, the, in, in Egypt. No, he saw the Red Sea, you know, being parted. So, he saw Mana from heaven. He saw the rock, you know, the, come out with water from the rock. He saw the glory of God when he was in the mountaintop and he ate and drank with God, in, in the presence of God, sorry. He spent 40 days in the mountain, and God spoke with him, and he received the Ten Commandments. And God often spoke to him face to face in the tent meeting. And I asked myself, isn't this, isn't this enough? Moses saw so all these things, and he still wanted more. See, because he, he knew that he could go deeply, more deep with God. So, in reply to Moses, God tells him in Exodus 33, 19, he says, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you. So when Moses tells him, I want to see your glory, God says, you will see my glory. If you want to go deeper with me, I'll go deeper. See, Moses has seen those things in the past. Those miracles were in the past, you know, maybe happened months, weeks ago. But he said, I want to see your glory today. What happened yesterday, it was yesterday. I want the glory today too. See, the apostle had the same desire as, as, as Moses. He was taken to the third, third heaven, and God showed him great things, and things that you know we can't even imagine, or when human, put it in human words, but he showed him great things, and, and, and he says, I, I want more. I want to see more of God. So in Philippians 3, 12, he says, not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which I also was laid hold to by Christ, Jesus. The brothers, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upper calling of God. You want to receive more? You want to get into a deeper place with God? You gotta forget what you received yesterday. And I'm not saying to completely forget it. No, you gotta be thankful and say, Lord, yesterday was your presence, but I want my presence. I want your presence today. Lord, last week I spoke in tongues, but today I want to speak in tongues too. Lord, last week I saw a miracle, I want to see a miracle today. I want to go deeper with God. You know, it's not enough to see his glory. Every, every year or every other week. No, no, I want to see His glory. I want to see His presence every day of my life. You know, that's what Paul says. I forget what was behind me. I forget that because I want His presence today. I want what lies ahead. The thing is that God's an infinite God. So we can always go more deeper with Him. We can, all, we can always ask more from Him because He's, he's an infinite God. And God's telling us today to go deeper. He's telling us to go across with Him. And I know God's been making the statement to me, and when He gave me this word, this preaching, it's been a while since God's been telling me to get into a deeper relationship with Him. And He's always inviting people to cross. But many have excuses. And right before he got on the boat, uh, the verses that we read, the, the, uh, Matthew, he 
He invites people to go with them. He invites them. He sees them with and he invites them to go to go across with them and, and to follow him. But they started making excuses. So Matthew eight. Um, verse 18 and 22 says, And when Jesus saw a great multitudes about him, he gave a command to the parts of the other sea. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the ears have nests, but the Son of Man has no word to lay his head. And then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. They started making excuses. Jesus said, let's go across, follow me. And the first thing they do is what? Make excuses. So God's making the statement to you, to me this morning. Go across with me. Go into this deeper relationship with me. But the question is, what's stopping you from crossing? What's holding you back? What's hindering you from spiritual progress. Look at what look at what the apostles did when Jesus told them to go across. He, they saw that the multitude didn't go with them. So in Mark, you know, verse uh, chapter four thirty six, he says, "Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was." They said, "They don't want to follow you. We'll go with you." They don't want to cross with you. Well, they left the crowd behind and said, we're going with you, Jesus. So what's stopping you from crossing? If you want to make this cross this morning, if you want to go deeper with God, ask yourself this, what do I need to leave behind? Maybe it's sin, you know, an addiction that you have battling with? Maybe it's the crowd that you got to leave behind? Maybe a relationship? Maybe a certain someone that's holding you back from your spiritual growth? You have to leave it behind. If you want to go deeper with God, you have to leave it behind. You just said you got to deny yourself. You want to follow me, you got to deny yourself. But if you want to make the strong, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. It's not going to be easy. There's going to be obstacles in the way. Because as soon as they got on the boat, they started making the cross, there's a storm that broke out. Because the enemy does not want you to make the cross. As soon as they got on the boat, there was a storm. And then when they got to the other side, there was a demon man that was possessed and he was, that was, he was waiting for them. And immediately he came to them. So, there's going to be a position. But you're not going to be alone in that boat. So if you want to make that cross, there's going to be battles. But you're not the captain of the boat. So, I'm, I'm asking you guys, if you want to make that cross, you know, God's telling us this morning, it's time to go deeper. You're not going to view God the same way you did. The people that stayed behind, you know, if you keep reading the book, um, the chapter 5 of, of Mark, people were on the other side, and you know, they were waiting for Jesus to come back. But they didn't see what God did, or they didn't see what Jesus did during the, during the crossing. They stayed behind, and they all thought, you know, Jesus is going to come back. We're going to view him as the same Jesus that left. But when the apostles crossed with them, they saw those things, these miracles, and they, when the key came to the storm, they even said, who is this man? They started questioning themselves and saying, this is not ordinary man. And when they got to the other side, the demon possessed man, the demons started begging Jesus not to torment them. Not to cast them out into the abyss. Or abyss, I don't know how to say it. But 
when the apostles saw this, they were asking, so who is this man? This is not the same Jesus that we know. People that stayed behind, you know, they still view Jesus as, as not a prophet. Maybe just as another, uh, another man. But the apostles that went with them, they made a crossing. They said, no, this is not ordinary man. This is God. So, if you want to make the cross today, you're not going to come back the same way. You're abused, you're not going to view Jesus, you're not going to see Jesus the same way you, you did before. You're not going to praise Him the same. You're not going to worship Him the same. Why? Because your life has been changed. You have seen something of God that you haven't seen before. When you make the cross, you're going to see the full power of God. So who wants to make that commitment tomorrow, to, today, this morning? To make that cross? I'm going to ask you guys to, to stand up. And uh, if you guys want to make that commitment, we can come up. But before we come up, I'm going to ask you that this is not a just you know, a Sunday that we come and pray and say, I make the commitment and pray and go back to your seats and then say, no, no, this is a commitment that you're going to say, Lord, I'm not going to stop till I see a change in my life. I'm not going to stop praying or fasting or seeking you till I see a difference in my life. That when I get home, I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to seek you until I see a change in my life, until I see that I made it to the other side. Now, it might take weeks, it might take months, but I'm not going to stop till I make that, till I see that change, till I see my ministry grow, till I see a change in my life, till I see a change in the spiritual, in my spiritual life. 